Good morning. Thank you for joining with us this morning for worship. We appreciate you being here. This is our third week of virtual worship, and each week has been different with new technology challenges for our staff. Those challenges have pushed us to be even more adaptive and creative. So I want to say a big thank you to the entire staff and the work that they are doing in new ways. It has been a challenge, but they have met the challenge. And I appreciate the congregation and your faithfulness in your giving and full participation in the various ministries of First Church. My sincere thanks to you all. And now I invite you to hear a word from the Lord from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, just two verses. Live in peace with each other. I urge you, sisters and brothers, to warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, we ask you to be with us this day in all that we do. We ask you particularly in these moments to be with us as we think together, as we speak words of encouragement, as we hear those words of encouragement. So, so that we may grow to be even better faithful disciples of you. Be with all that is said and done, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. There are many, many times when the scriptures sing to me. Being a lifelong musician, there are times when I read a passage of scripture and my internal ears associate a biblical text with a hymn or an anthem or an extended choral work. More composers than we can count or name use biblical or sacred texts as the basis of extraordinarily beautiful and meaningful musical compositions. The timeless texts were chosen for a reason because of their relevance to the composer or performer or listener. Conversely, there are also times when I listen to music and because of my familiarity with the scriptures, the music, particularly the text of a composition, sends me to my biblical reference books to discover anew a text that has spoken to me in a brand new way. One of the blessings of our current physical isolation that has been appropriately mandated to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus is that I have had time to listen to a lot of music that under normal circumstances I would not be able to do. Perhaps I should phrase that differently to be a bit more accurate. I don't typically create the time in my everyday life to listen to music. Over the last couple of weeks, I continue to learn that when I purposefully set aside time to simply listen to music, I am more the person that I was created to be. Listening to beautiful music speaks to my soul. Listening provides peace in the midst of a disquieting situation. Music helps me stay focused and provides a spark of creativity and productivity that I seldom have without it. 
The other day I was listening to one of the choral music channels on the internet Pandora station that is typically on in my study. I heard an anthem by John Rutter that I have known for many, many years. But the text spoke to me in a new way that was surprising. Both the music and the text would not leave me alone. I just simply could not release it from my consciousness. And so I set out to discover anew more about the anthem. In my research, I discovered that Mr. Rudder set to music a text that first appeared in the 1892 Book of Common Prayer. It was included in the 1928 Anglican edition of the Common Book of Common Prayer as the charge, or perhaps better stated, the benediction for confirming baptized persons into the membership of the church. It's based largely on the passage of scripture that I read just a few moments ago from 1 Thessalonians. For those of you who might be familiar with Anglican liturgy, this text may resonate anew for you. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Show love to everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. What a magnificent text for this particular time in our human drama. Over the last several weeks, as well as for the foreseeable future, our concerns and fears are heightened for ourselves and for our loved ones, for our friends and for our comrades in the faith. We are, all of us are concerned and pray for medical professionals and counselors, for emergency responders and administrators. We are concerned and pray for workers who are keeping essential services open and available to us. We are concerned and we pray for leaders and officials who are making decisions to keep us safe. We are concerned and we pray for teachers and students, administrators, parents, and child care workers during this most trying time. We are concerned and we pray for our world community who are suffering from the effects of this pandemic. Historians tell us that this situation is unlike anything that we have ever faced before. And so we search, we explore, we pray, we ponder, we listen and we read, we dig deep in our spiritual center as we look for faith in the midst of fear, hope in the midst of despair, and love in the midst of loneliness, isolation, and physical distancing. We are facing a challenge that we are ill-prepared to face. So given our circumstances, given our current vulnerability, given our fears, given our search to love and be loved as we continue to develop our sense of hope, Hold all of that in tension as we listen once more to the confirmation blessing. And this time, as you hear it, I invite you to listen for a particular phrase that may leap out to you. Perhaps you could write it down and then pr prayerfully hold that particular phrase as being a word from the Lord for you this day. Hear it again. Go forth into the world in peace. 
be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Show love to everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Each phrase is a message unto itself, isn't it? And by the way, this particular text is posted on our website for you to consider and pray over as we grow into the significance of its message for us. If we are to go into the world with peace, we must be at peace. We must practice peace. Clearly, we need to be of good courage just now. We don't need foolishness. We need wisdom and grace and courage. We need to fill our minds with goodness so that we can practice what is good rather than what is evil. But then there was a subtle shift in the text, wasn't there? Suddenly we are moving from an inner spiritual journey to an outward demonstration of the work of Christ in our world. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Show love to everyone. Love and serve the Lord. To all of us who have gathered in this unusual way for worship this morning, what can we do? What can we do to do the work of Christ under the circumstances in which we find ourselves? How can we strengthen and support and help and show love in the midst of our crisis? All of us can do something. Doing something might include making surgical type masks or gowns for medical professionals or participating in the retooling work that's going on to make hand sanitizers and ventilators. We can give money to make those things happen. We can give money to help feed the hungry or to provide shelter and clothing for the suffering. We can pick up the phone to check on a neighbor or a friend or a loved one. We can encourage someone by sending a text or an email or a card. We can be prayerful, committed to praying for others. My friends, these are just a few of the many, many ways that we can demonstrate the love of Christ as we do the work of ministry during this crucial time. I believe Christ is calling us to be creative and responsive in doing whatever it is we can do and doing that work out of our faith in God, our hope for a better day ahead, and motivated by the love of Christ that fills us and compels us to do the work of Christ for this time and in this season. All of us can make a positive difference. The work of Christ today is accomplished through each one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being with us in worship. The anthem that I spoke about, Eric has found in a recording and will play that as the postlude. But what I would like you to remember is that even in this time of isolation, all of us can make a positive difference in the world. We can go forth into the world with peace, offering love and kindness and hope. 
The work of Christ today is accomplished through each one of us. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.